Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wrestling with Rosafon. And for this episode, we're going to speak on another safe, supporting character, and that is Elvi Hadiat. Now, Elvi is not a critical addition to the series, but it is a great one, as her presence is very refreshing in many ways, and one which balances out a lot of the other cast. And I think it should be said that she's probably the best written female character too, um, something I specify because Rosafon has an issue writing women for some reason. And again, while not critical, her presence is an excellent one which greatly helps to enhance the series. She supports many of the other casts, and is often a voice of reason, telling people to simply live their life and express themselves when all of the melodrama around them seems to get in the way of doing so. She even helps Haruka navigate some of her own issues and bad writing, which is a decent attempt to try and help everyone out. There are issues with this, but we'll get to that again later. Before we get to anything else though, let's do a quick plot overview of Elvie's presence. Now, Elvie first appears in Episode 1, although we don't really get to know her or really hear her say anything until about Episode 4, where she is established as the no-nonsense leader of the Alpha Squadron. In this role, and after reforming the squadron with some new compatriots, she serves as the sort of backup to, and maybe kind of even a little bit of a mentor for Ayato, accompanying him on many dangerous missions. They look out for each other and they fight side by side, gaining a sense of mutual respect. Outside of missions, Elvia is sort of Haruka's best friend, and often accompanies her on many of her errands and trips. In this role, she serves as a sort of voice of reason for Haruka, although not enough to talk her out of her fascination with a 17-year-old boy, but again, we'll get to that later. Anyways, in this role, she serves as a source of advice and just general emotional support. Later on, Elvie has a bit of a falling out with Ayato after learning of his blue blood, although she soon gets over this and even accepts Haruka's plan to follow Ayato to Tokyo Jupiter, putting her own career on the line in order to try and help her friend and retrieve Ayato. While this doesn't necessarily go anywhere, it does allow Haruka to share many scenes with Elvie and for us to get to know both of them a little more. We learn of what and how she feels about the state of the world, and we learn that Haruka is still kind of a creepy weirdo. She'll get her own video, don't worry. Anyways, the time the two spend together does allow LV to give out some more advice to Haruka, mostly about that it's important to take care of one's responsibilities and keep moving forward. After the return of everyone to Terra Base, LV is grounded um, for her obvious slight insubordination for a bit, and is thus powerless as the fellow pilot Donnie Wong, someone whom she has grown close to as both a fellow warrior and perhaps a little more, is killed in the line of duty. This doesn't stop her though, and even though she's experienced great loss, she still powers through life. While she is very greatly affected by the death of Mr. Wong, it doesn't stop her from flying or even serving into the last battle of the series as all forces gather in the Pacific Ocean for the climactic showdown. Unfortunately, in the showdown, she has to see a lot more carnage and is probably killed by one of Ayato's uncontrolled blasts, although seeing as that everything reset, I'm assuming that she's still flying to this day. Getting to her character, the reason I think Elvie deserved the video is because of what she brings to the cast. What she brings to the cast is a very well-balanced and well-adjusted person who understands the need to balance one's emotions with one's responsibilities. Now, Elvie is not a cold husk who focuses solely on the job at hand, like, say, Kunigi may appear to be, and she's not someone who is always consumed by her emotions or on the fringe of some kind of emotional outburst, like Haruka at times seems to be. No, instead, she's a good midground of someone who allows themselves to emote and at times gets a little carried away with this, acting a little impulsive here and there, but understands that while expressing oneself is important, that it's also important to take care of one's responsibilities and keep moving forward. And we see this in LV a lot, as while she does get emotional at times, she does get impulsive at times, and she does express these feelings very openly, she doesn't become consumed or defined by these. At the end of the day, she is her own person, and while she does express herself, she doesn't get carried away with doing so. In this way, she's a very well-adjusted member of the cast, and a very good addition to it, as in a series which seems to be melodramatic for no reason other than to be melodramatic at times, it's very nice having LV just kind of balance everyone out. She's a nice mid-ground, as she's not entirely logical, but she's not entirely emotional, and for this reason, she kind of anchors those around her. We see this a lot in her interactions with Haruka, and to some extent, Ayato. Starting with Ayato, while the two do have a kind of fluctuating relationship, as LV kind of has a following out with him over the whole Boolean thing, uh, they do seem to have a genuine respect for each other, and do appreciate each other's presence on the battlefield. 
and it's refreshing seeing a much more experienced pilot kind of mentor Ayato and tell him the need to remain focused and help him understand the stakes of what's at hand while not being strictly duty focused or strictly on the job or, or extensively cold. In her interaction with Haruka, LV does a bit more and I kind of feel like LV was written to be the main supporting female character of Razafon because of how much time she has with uh, Haruka and because of their established relationship as friends. As friends, LV does a pretty good job of balancing out Haruka's more sensitive and emotional side. As well, LV does have emotions, she is for the most part the more carefree member of the two and she always is moving forward where Haruka seems to live exclusively in the past. And the difference in the two's dynamics allows for some good banter and allows Haruka to express herself more in the limited character development scenes that she does have with Elvi. It does seem weird that Elvi is the logical character, you know, the one that said, why are we doing this? Or you should just tell them how you feel. Character that gives very logical advice and yet never really questions Haruka's attraction to Ayato. I mean, she does question it from a purely context standpoint. She's like, why do you seem so interested in this guy? She never asks truly logical questions. It's like, isn't that weird? Or shouldn't you have gone over this like 14 years ago? Or hey, isn't he 17? And while this is a critical issue with the character, the issue that LV does support Haruka throughout this weird quest is more an issue in the writer's room. It's more of a meta issue than an issue with LV's character. Or at least that's how I interpreted it. While I do take issue with Haruka's arc, being basically centered along trying to somehow get back with Ayato, which is problematic because Haruka lives in the past and doesn't move on and has bad mental hygiene, but that's for a different video. I do understand that LV supporting her friend is just supposed to be LV supporting her friend. Basically, they had a character established, but they realized that having her stick to that character 100% consistently would you know, cause the issue of having the viewer ask the same questions that for some reason they expected that we wouldn't, even though I know I certainly did. Um, what I'm getting at here is since a lot of the series is predicated on Haruka's weird obsession, they don't want to have a character question it and thus kind of undermine the whole show. That's not an issue with Elvie's character per se, it's just the writers kind of ignoring part of it in order to sweep under the rug some of the weirder aspects of the plot, especially Haruka's place in it. And for, at the end of the day, LV is a good member of the supporting cast, as she basically just tells a lot of them to move forward, and she herself lives by this. And we see this when she tries to, and succeeds in getting over the death of Donnie Wong, her fellow pilot and perhaps even potential lover. Now, I did think it was a little weird that this romance thing was kind of shoehorned in in like the two episodes that we had before Donnie's death. However, in this context and understanding that we don't necessarily see Alpha Squadron all the time, I understand it's just kind of a background thing and not to make a big, it's not supposed to be a big deal. However, I do think that LV's reaction to it is actually fitting because even if it wasn't a romantic thing or sufficiently romantic yet, this is still someone she's been fighting alongside with for years, so there's obviously some kind of strong bond, if it's even if it's not romantic. So I did think it was fine having LB get upset over this, and I really did appreciate how she moved forward despite this. And I think that's a good lesson that LB kind of imparts to the viewer, is that it is important to express oneself, but that can't be all you do, and that you need to move forward after doing so. You see, as a pilot, LV works in a very dangerous line of work and under a lot of pressure in a lot of occasions. Therefore, she understands how fleeting life is, and therefore, how much it must be appreciated. At any minute, her or any one of her companions could be shot down, or maimed in an accident, or mutilated, or killed in some horrible way, in any magnitude of ways. And as such, she understands that her time is limited, and that she doesn't necessarily know when it's going to end. So, she should appreciate whatever time she does have, and live life to the fullest. Now, this doesn't mean she abandons her responsibilities, or casts everything aside. But it does mean that she doesn't live in the past, she doesn't wallow, and that she understands that she needs to move forward because if you don't know how much time you have left, then wasting time wallowing in negative emotions is just as bad as kind of throwing your life away in any other sense. At the end of the day, you're just kind of wasting what time you have been given, and that's not what you want to do, and that's not what she wants to do. Instead, she wants to enjoy her life and live it to the fullest, both out of respect for herself and those around her, 
and out of respect for the fleeting nature of life itself. Like Yagamo, her presence is a refreshing one, as even though she does say serious things and give serious advice many times, she is never consumed by a lot of the melodrama which may be around her. Her insight is often the clearest of many of those around her, and even if she does get emotional, she's still a good source of advice oftentimes, and never loses control. She never gives into emotion fully. She supports a lot of the cast, helping them get over their own issues, and she seems to be pretty good at carrying herself, accepting emotional responsibility, and generally just being a responsible adult, I guess. And this gets us to another sort of meta conversation, which is LV is probably the best written female in the entire series. Maybe not the best written, but the one that is best written and also relevant to the plot. I consider Kim to be pretty well written, and I also consider Megami to have some great writing. However, both of them are supporting characters that if we took them out of the series would honestly not change anything at all. LV does something plot relevant, and while Kim and Megami do also I'm sure at some point, their entire presence in the show feels kind of tacked on and isn't really necessary, which we'll get to, and I will say is a shame considering that those two characters are actually pretty well developed. It's just very confusing to me why Razafon has a specific issue writing female characters, and regardless of how you feel about the fact, I think it's pretty obvious that a lot of it is a pretty one note. I mean, LV, Megami, and Kim are pretty well developed. They have arcs, they're interesting, they're defined, they feel like real people. But a lot of the other female characters just kind of feel like caricatures based on a quote-unquote feminine trait. I said this in the Kim video, uh, and basically what I'm saying is most of the female characters are really underdeveloped and just kind of boring and bland. They have one defining trait and that's it. And it's really weird to me that Rosafon does this when it proves that with characters like LV that it doesn't necessarily need to. I don't think this is a malicious thing. I don't think anyone was going out of their way to try and say something negative about women. I think it's an honest exercise of naivete or incompetence maybe. Maybe someone got lazy. But it is kind of disappointing seeing that a good portion of the cast is just very one note. And regardless of how offensive you may find that to be, I think it is an objective flaw of the series as it means that a lot of the cast is just kind of boring, and as a result, we're less interested about them, so we're less interested in the story as a whole. Every story doesn't need to have, like, the best characters ever, but having good or developed or defined characters definitely doesn't hurt. And Razafon struggles to do that with a lot of the female cast. And there's a lot of female characters in this show, too, so it does... it is something that you subconsciously notice. LV doesn't have this issue, though. She's a pretty well-defined and pretty well balanced character. She has a definite presence, and she has a definite personality, and while she is emotional, she's not cartoonishly emotional like some of the other characters in the series. In fact, she's often very aware of her own emotions, and one of the few people who seems to know how to handle them in a healthy manner. She cries sometimes, but everyone should at least sometimes. Um, she gets upset, but that's pretty normal. Um, she enjoys life a lot too, which is good. She's just a very well-balanced and refreshing character because she's a pretty logical one and a pretty interesting one. Someone who's supportive of her friends and yet is strong enough to also realize she needs to support herself. And someone who just simply wants to live life after appreciating how fleeting it can be.